What's going on, YouTube? And welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy, Kevin Forte. Guys, we're taking a look today at the top five forward cores going into the 2021-2022 NHL season. Let's kick it off right now. So, we're going to start off with our top five, right? We're going to have our five, and we're also going to have two honorable mentions. So, they're both in the Eastern Conference, and the first one is the Montreal Canadiens. The Montreal Canadiens finished 17th in the NHL for goals for last season, which is right around the middle of the pack, actually on the lower end of that. But I like some of the moves that they made this summer. They've gotten better in their forward group, and uh, I think it's worth noting that some of their guys that are on the roster are going to get better, and I think that is part of the equation. So you're looking at their top six. You got Toffoli, Suzuki, and Cole Caulfield. That's a really solid top line. A huge part of their success is, in the Stanley Cup playoffs here in 2021, and they're hoping maybe that can continue into this season. The second line, you got Jonathan Drouin, Jesperi Kakinyemi, and Brendan Gallagher. Now, Kakinyemi seems like he is destined to go to the Carolina Hurricanes, but whoever they fill in that void, whether it's a Tomas Hurdle, whether it ends up being a Christian Dvorak, I don't think it makes that big of a difference because any of those guys will fill the role of Kakinyemi and some people may disagree with me on that, but I think they will be just fine. Now, the key thing for this list, it's not necessarily that the Habs are so top-heavy. It's their depth. And you look at their third line, and that's a huge example of that. You got Mike Hoffman and Josh Anderson on the wings, and you got Jake Evans down the middle centering that line, which I think is a, a pretty solid third line. Probably one of the better ones, at the very least, in that Atlantic division, if not in the entire NHL. And then looking at the fourth line, you have Arturi Lekkanen, Cedric Paquette, and Yoel Armia. And I think that's another really solid line. Not to mention, you still have some depth guys. You have a guy like Ryan Paling who can also play center. I really like what I've seen from the Habs. And I think they got better last se uh, from, this, from last season into this season. And then the other honorable mention staying in the Eastern Conference is the New York Rangers. They had 177 goals for last season. They finished 11th in the NHL. And I think we're going to see the emergence of some of the, their young wingers. Their first overall picks, Alexi Lafreniere and Capo Caco. They're listed on the first line alongside Mika Zibanejad. I think the Rangers need these guys to step up this year. Caco on the final year of an entry-level deal. And Zibanejad is actually a pending unrestricted free agent. He is a free agent next summer. So you know he's going to be looking to have a good season. He had a good season last year with the Rangers. Despite a slow start, I think he really was able to turn things around as the season went along. Artemi Panarin, Ryan Strom, and Vitaly Kravtsov is your second line. Uh, it seems like Ryan Strom will be staying. So there were some rumors that maybe he would get moved out. He seems to be staying there, and it may actually benefit the depth of the Rangers, specifically down the middle. The third line and fourth line are also pretty solid. Yeah, Barclay Goudreau, Philip Hedl, and Chris Kreider. The fact that Chris Kreider is listed as a third liner, maybe he gets in over Kraftsov there on the second line. But Chris Kreider, with his injury history, he's been a little bit uh, inconsistent because of that. But as long as he could stay healthy, the New York Rangers have another really talented player there. You also have on the fourth line, you have Morgan Baran, Kevin Rooney, and Sammy Blay, which I think Sammy Blay coming in there is a great addition. Kevin Rooney actually moving down the lineup really to where he's supposed to be. I think this is a good fit there. And Morgan Baran is a rookie that we are seeing internally from the Rangers organization. So we'll see what he turns out to be. Not to mention they still have a guy like Ryan Reeves, uh, who is not listed on the roster. You also have guys like Dryden Hunt. Some of those grinder power forward guys, maybe for that game one against Tom Wilson. They're, they definitely marked that one on the calendar. So you got the Rangers as the other honorable mention. With that said, let's move into the top five scoring teams this season, or in my predictions based off of their lineup. Uh, we're looking at the Vancouver Canucks at number five. They had uh, 151 goals for last season, 24th in the league, which was obviously toward the bottom of the NHL. But they had a lot of injuries last season, which I think was a big part of that. And really over the last couple seasons, I mean, you know, Bo, Bo Horvat, their captain, was out for extended points last season. Two years ago, it was Brock Besser who was a big part of their scoring threat. So when you've got guys consistently out of the lineup, it did hurt them. So hopefully they stay healthy this season and they're able to keep these guys together because they really, this is a good group. I mean, you look at their first line, JT Miller, Elias Pedersen, and Brock Besser. That's a really solid first line. 
And they follow that up with a pretty good second line as well. Niels Hoglander, Bo Horvat, and Connor Garland. I think there's still some debate on where Niels Hoglander is going to fit. Who takes that left winger spot? Is it Vasily Podkolzin? Is it a guy like Tanner Pearson? That's still up for debate. And then the bottom six, really solid. I mean, a really good third line. You got Tanner Pearson, Jason Dickinson, and Vasily Podkolz, and that's a really solid third line. And then the fourth line, you got Mott, uh, Brandon Sutter, and Matthew Highmore, which, again, good depth. And that's actually a pretty, in terms of like size, a big fourth line. So I do like that there for the Canucks. Now moving up to number four, I'm wearing their jersey today. It's the Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights had 191 goals for last season. That was third best in the NHL. So not only did they have the best overall goals against in the NHL last season, they were right in the top tier in terms of goals for as well. And you look at their lineup they have a really good lineup and pretty similar to what we saw last season, which some people may say they need another center. And I think there's definitely debate for that. So right now, according to Cap Friendly uh, or Daily Faceoff, they have Max Pacioretty and Mark Stone and Chandler Stevenson is centering that first line. I'm sure they would love to have a Jack Eichel in there, but nothing imminent at this point. You got the second line. You have Jonathan Marcheseau, William Carlson and Riley Smith. All key parts of the expansion team, and they're still sticking around. So, a really solid second line. Probably one of the best second lines in the entire NHL. Now, you look at the third line. You have Matthias Janmark, Nolan Patrick, and Evgeny Dadanov. The newly acquired Evgeny Dadanov. I think he's a really nice piece there. And then the fourth line. Brett Howden, Nicholas Waugh, and Will Carrier. I really like some of the guys they added in that bottom six. Guys like Dadanov, Patrick, and Brett Howden. I think will be nice compliments to this team. I think there's a big wild card there with Nolan Patrick. Considering, considering what they gave up and a guy like Cody Glass, you better hope that Nolan Patrick turns out. But I think the Golden Knights see a future with him in the lineup. Now we're moving on up to number three. And we are talking about the Mecca of Hockey, the Toronto Maple Leafs at number three. 187 goals for last season. Not too far from Vegas. They were sixth in the NHL for goals for last year. And they have a very top heavy team you look at their top six you got nick ritchie austin matthews and mitch marner alex kerfoot john Tavares, and william nylander so you're looking at really matthews Tavares, marner and nylander those are your top four and then you kind of sprinkle guys like ritchie and kerfoot into the mix now here's one of the things that i don't think a lot of people are talking about but it's their bottom six additions i think they made some really nice moves here you bring in michael bunting david camp and Ilya Mikheyev as your third line. I think David Kampf, if he had more minutes in Chicago, could have been a better suited player there. He's going to get that opportunity on the third line in Toronto. Michael Bunting was a guy that was kind of kicked out of Arizona. The Arizona native with the Arizona Coyotes ends up leaving the team in free agency. And he didn't want to go anywhere but Toronto. And it seems like he may find a fit. I could see him jumping into that top six, maybe taking a role from Nick Ritchie or Kerfoot on the left side in the top six. And that's really where Michael Bunting is probably striving for going into training camp. You also have guys like Wayne Simmons, Jason Spezza, and Andre Kasha rounding out the, the fourth line. And I, this isn't by any means the big fourth line. I mean, Kasha and Spezza are more of scoring threats, but we know Kyle Dubas doesn't put that much emphasis on the power side of things, but they do have some big guys. David Camp is a pretty big guy over six feet. Mikheyev and obviously Wayne Simmons, who is a power forward. Uh, and you also have a little bit of that in Nick Ritchie, who is potentially going to be playing on the top line with Matthews and Marner. And then moving up to number two, we're talking about the same teams here at the top. At number two, it's the Colorado Avalanche. They have a really stacked team this year. Last season, they actually finished first in the NHL for goals for 197 goals for last season. Uh, they are one of the best teams on paper as well. You look at their lineup, Landeskog, McKinnon, and Rantanen, one of the best first lines in the NHL. 
and their depth is really solid as well. JT Confer, Nazem Kadri, and Andre Burakovsky, not to mention their bottom six is loaded with lots of potential prospects that could jump into the top six. You got Alex Newhook, Tyson Yost, and, Val- and Valerie Nichushkin. I think all those guys can have a chance on that second line where JT Confer is listed right now. Not to mention the fourth line, they've got some additions there. Logan O'Connor, we saw a little bit last year, but then some new faces. You have Mikhail Maltsev, who they got in the uh, Ryan Graves trade with the Devils and they also pick up Darren Helm who is not the player he used to be but on a cheaper contract a guy that can kill penalties is definitely not easy to play against Darren Helm is a nice guy to round out that group and kind of replaces what they lost in Pierre Edward Belmar who is now a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning and I really like what they've got there in Colorado keeping Landy was a huge piece uh, for this Avalanche team this summer. And I remember plenty of times I was making videos how Landis Gog may move out. And uh, luckily he ended up staying in the Mile High City. So with that said, we move up to my prediction or really my take on the best forward core in the NHL going into this season. And guys, it's the defending stuff, Stanley Cup champions. They have the best defense. They have the best and the best forward group in the NHL. And that continues Really, until they get knocked off that pedestal, and that's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, their goals for last season, it was 8th in the NHL. It wasn't anything special. Only 181 goals for last season. But then you look at how deep this team is. Your top six, Andre Palat, Braden Point, and Nikita Kucherov. That's your first line. Your second line, Alex Kalorn, Steven Samkos, and Alex barre Boulay. You could argue that first, that second line could be a first line, and again, this is a lineup without a guy like Yanni Gord, who was let go in the expansion draft. Now, looking at their bottom six, we're seeing a lot of new faces, but also some veterans. So you've got Ross Colton and Matthew Joseph, centered by Anthony Sorelli, who again he could probably a be he could probably be a second line center on any other NHL team in this league. And then you look at the fourth line, you bring back Pat Maroon, who's looking to win his fourth consecutive Stanley Cup. And you also have another guy in Pierre-Edward Belmar, who I just mentioned, left the Colorado Avalanche. He's a really solid piece. And you also have Corey Perry, who is officially cup chasing. The last two years, he's been beat by these Tampa Bay Lightning in the Stanley Cup Final. In 2020, he lost to them in the bubble. Uh, And now in 2021, he lost to them, again, with the Montreal Canadiens. So, very interesting to see how this team looks. Especially with all the losses they've had. I think Tampa is going to be a very interesting team to watch. Because they have guys like Joseph, Colton, and Barre Boulay uh, filling some voids. But they also have some other guys like Boris Kachuk, Taylor Radish, Otto Sapi. Those guys can fill out some roles in that bottom six. Or even on that second line if Alex Barre Boulay doesn't maybe work out the way they had hoped. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What are your top five forward cores in the NHL going into the 2021-2022 NHL season? Again, guys, this is pretty subjective. It, you know, it's not a definite list, but it's interesting to see just how these teams have gotten better. And I think a team like Tampa Bay, obviously they were better going into the playoffs last year. But again, you also have to remember, we're going to see some of these guys spurt out of nowhere that end up being really solid, especially guys like Boule, uh, that I think can just really add that punch to the lineup that the Tampa Bay Lightning need if they want to win a third consecutive Stanley Cup. So, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to check out our Streamlab shop, which we have Goal Line Hockey merch now available. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, you just want to get some Goal Line Hockey swag, make sure to check that out in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.